This week on Bloop on Blip, we've got Aaron Sonnenberg and Epic Foo. Hey guys, I'm Annie and you're watching Blip on Blip. Kelly and I created this show to give you an inside look at what goes on behind the scenes right here at Blip.tv. As far as the weather goes, it's trying very, very hard to be spring. On the one hand, you've got beautiful springy days. On the other hand, you've rain. I don't know about that. Anyway, this week's interview with our blipper is Aaron Sonnenberg. I'm sitting here with Aaron Sonnenberg, <laughs> our content operations manager. Thank you for being with us, Aaron. Hey, Annie. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> so, what do you do at Flip? Just explain straight off the bat. <laughs> uh, I do a bunch of stuff. I guess primarily I make sure that we have the tools and um, processes we need to serve the content creators. Mm -hmm. But I also have a lot of relationships with a bunch of shows. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always emailing and talking with them and making sure they have what they need to get their shows out, to grow their audience. Um, and I have a hand in a lot of different things. So sort of can be all over the place, but it's pretty rewarding to, to see the whole picture. So around the office, you're kind of known as a jokester or a prankster. Would you care to share a little bit about that? <laughs> um, sure, I, I guess I... Uh, the Jeff prank maybe, or the Jeff joke? The Jeff joke, uh, Jeff sits right back here <laughs> and Jeff does not clean his desk. Um, so I have a 99 cent store pretty close to my apartment and I just decided one day that I would buy a new thing every day. <laughs> this is this is one of them. This is like the, no, this is the second the culminating gift. Um, and I kept adding them to his desk to see when he would clean it off and <laughs> he did not. So I eventually had to stop because it was costing me way too much money. <laughs> but I think the last thing I got him was a plastic bird cage with an automated bird in it that tweeted whenever <laughs> you touched it, but that became a target for the Nerf Wars, so uh, okay. it got destroyed. <laughs> but this has survived. Excellent. So, bringing it back, <laughs> you've spent a lot of time working with web series producers. Mm -hmm. What, um, it, would you say there are like common obstacles or com not obstacles? Sorry, would you say there are common mistakes that you've seen web series producers make? What are some of those mistakes? And how should people avoid them? Um, I think the biggest mistake people make is they limit themselves to a certain number of episodes, and then that's it, and they don't leave a means to keep going. Mm -hmm. So they may be onto something great and they're starting to build this awesome audience and they're doing everything else. They're reaching out, engaging with their audience um, genuinely and then they're done. And it's sort of like you're building this momentum and uh, you stop. Um, so I always advise like make sure you can keep going. Um, someone's holding something <laughs> up. But make sure you can keep going if it means uh, shooting a lot of B-roll, if it means releasing behind the scenes stuff. Um, <laughs> you just, you just got to keep going and uh, yeah, that's I, the way to build audience. Thanks, Aaron, for taking the time out of your busy burgling schedule to chat with us. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Annie. <laughs> we don't get to talk about any of the pranks I play on Evan. While I was in Los Angeles, Zadi Diaz stopped in the office for a quick chat. Zadi is the co-creator of long-running, Webby award-winning web series, Epic Foo, which is a show about art, music, and tech. She's been doing this for a long time, so she has a lot of wise advice to share with producers. So I'm sitting here with Zadi Diaz, co-producer and creator of Epic Foo. Thank yes. you for being with us. Thank you. So why don't you take us back? Take us back. All right. How did this all come about? What year is it? It's, Set the scene. It's June 1st, 2006. Okay. It's a hot summer day, mm -hmm. California. Oh, it's getting good. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And we're there, you know, trying to kind of uh, come up with um, a show. Actually, to cut backtrack a little bit, mm -hmm. we were both both come from Rocket Boom yes. as co correspondents. So that's How actually started working together. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's kind of where the concept for, for Jet Set Show came mm -hmm. um, when I started working on it with Steve Wolf, who, was my, who is my partner. I think I know that guy. Working partner. He's pretty tall. Uh, and also my husband. <laughs> <laughs> he is pretty tall. Yes. <laughs> and we started thinking about this concept of, uh, well, let's make a show about, um, you know, kind of like this sketch comedy show with whatever we want. We just want to make it fun and we mm -hmm. wanted to tap into an audience that was young and mm -hmm. kind of have them collaborate with us and mm -hmm. make content and media. And we started thinking about what that would look like mm -hmm. and of course the people that we wanted to work with. Mm -hmm. And that's where you came in. Oh, that's very <laughs> sweet. Thank you. So Epic Foo being such a long running web series, you guys have gone through a lot of changes. You guys even had a name change at one mm -hmm. point. What drives these changes or how do you guys adapt to maybe even outside forces. No, absolutely. I mean, that's a good point. Outside forces mm -hmm. is what it's all about. I mean, when we started 2006, there were not mm -hmm. that many shows happening online. Right. Um, like I said before, we started, we're kind of almost, uh, our predecessor was Rocket Boom. Uh, we were very influenced by Zay Frank. Um, mm -hmm. So we had these shows that, you know, had a kind of um, very personal format, um, kind of newsy as well. But we wanted to take it to kind of this other level where we start, started incorporating like sketch um, bits and, mm -hmm. and have a, a lot of different elements. So I think at that point, 2006, we wanted to, we wanted for people to start creating content with us. Right. The funny thing is that not many, there were not many shows, so therefore there were not many people also creating content. Right, because it didn't exist yet. <laughs> exactly. Right. So I think just experimenting with that and failing for <laughs> nine months. So another very big part of Epic Foo that a casual viewer may not notice is you guys had a component on your website called Mix. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so Mix was our community site. It was um, really a place where not only we can talk to the people that are watching, but they can talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And that was most important for us, for um, them to kind of get to know one another. And since we were asking so many people to upload videos mm -hmm. and photos and all this stuff that they, we could incorporate into, a, into the show, we mm -hmm. thought, well, what if they can find people that they can work with together, yes. you know? And it was great. It was a great experience because we would go to events, events like South by Southwest mm -hmm. or Comic-Con, and then we would meet uh, people from Mix, and then they would introduce us to a friend of theirs that they just met on Mix. Yeah. And, you know, they would kind of get together, and now they have friendships. And I... For me, that was the most special thing. Yeah. I mean, how much, no matter how many views or, or all this stuff that you kind of compound onto a show, right. when you see it in person and these people meeting and how special that mm -hmm. is, it kind of makes it all worthwhile. It, oh. Like all the stresses, all the four o'clock mornings, 4 a.m., you know, working Speaking and editing. Of, what advice do you have for producers, especially producers that are looking to turn their web series into a sustainable um, project? <laughs> no, I, I think that's a great question. Um, I think my number one advice would be to really study the online world, <laughs> really know and get to know what works and what other people are doing, why it works for some people and why it doesn't for others. I think there's a lot of frustration, especially um, in LA, I think, with um, a lot of um, filmmakers who mm -hmm. really want to create beautiful things and they create amazing looking stories and right. have great actors, get great directors, mm -hmm. and then they put it online and they're just like, why isn't this working? Why is no one watching? I just put yeah. in so much time, so much money, and mm -hmm. so much effort. Why? Yeah. So I think that is a very hard lesson for many people mm -hmm. to kind of swallow. It's a little, it's a hard little right. pill to swallow. Um, people need to kind of understand that it's not only about beautiful stories. Mm -hmm. Story is always important. Don't get right. me wrong. Story is always important. But it's also about communication. It's also about interaction. It's also about really figuring out why people go online in the first place. Hmm, okay. And a lot of that also has to do with what people are searching because it's the internet is, is, is a search tool. Yes. People are still looking, going on to find things. And mm -hmm. so it's going to take time for people to kind of know that there are beautiful stories online yes. that they can kind of lean back and watch. I mean, mm -hmm. people are still kind of leaning forward, looking, right, searching right. and figuring out or getting uh, videos from friends or that kind of mentality. It's still a very like active process, watching web video as opposed to being passive, kind exactly. of just like, yeah. Exactly, and I think just taking some time to learn that before you, um, 
you know, you can create. I'm not saying not to create. Right. You know, I think if you're an artistic person, you're just going to always want to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing that, also to just take time to really sit down and, and, and observe what's going on online and what's working, why many YouTube videos get seen. And if it frustrates you that it's perhaps because of the title and the icon, <laughs> then what, what else works that you can incorporate and that, that works from that that you can pull into what you're working on? Okay, so lots of experimentation. Be persistent, don't give up. Yeah. Keep creating. Keep creating. Is that good? I think that's a good okay. Good roundup. All right. Is there anything else you want to say? Um <laughs> Thanks so much, Zadi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye guys. That's it for this week on Blip on Blip. You can catch us next week and every Tuesday after that, right here at the blog, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you next week.